Doug and PA back with another one. So, guys, this is part 12 of my women on TikTok who regret their student loans series. I really like making these guys. You guys seem to really like watching them because they get a lot of traffic on my channel. And if this is your first time here, thank you for, for watching this. And I'm going to put a link to the first 11 in the description of this video and the first comment pinned to the top. So go back and watch my previous 11 of these compilations, guys. And we're going to start this video, like I start all my women and the student loan debt videos by saying, guys, a woman's student loan debt, her debt in general, should be a disqualifier for consideration, prestige, relationship, and marriage, guys. Don't marry a woman with a bunch of student loan debt or debt in general. Don't do it because her debt will become your debt. And a woman's debt shows you her decision-making process or lack thereof. Women own over 70% of the $1.9 trillion of student loan debt. Men are going to school less. Women are going to, to school more. So as you get older, guys, most of the women, especially if they're professional women, are going to have more student loan debt or debt in general than you guys. Be careful, stay vigilant, and have that conversation. Have her tell you about her debt before you guys get serious. So we're going to get into this. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. It shows you support me and what I'm doing over here. And let's get into case number one. So I went to college in 2016, and my freshman year, I had to take out a couple of loans so I could go to school. You know, like most people do. After that, I worked multiple jobs. So I wouldn't have to take out any more loans. In fact, by my senior year, I paid for the whole thing by myself. So Okay, so... How did you end up in student loan debt if by your senior year you, you're paying for it all by yourself? The loans I'm talking about are the loans from 2016. My mom, being the kind, wonderful, amazing human being that she is, took on one of those loans for me. Like, she's been paying it. And she has been paying it every single month since I took it out in 2016. That good old Parent PLUS loan, man. These women are putting the financial burden of their psychology degree, sociology degree, social work degree, and other degrees that's not going to make them a lot of money or no one cares about on their parents. Isn't that sad? Keep in mind, it is now 2023. So we're talking seven years later. She told me as of a couple of weeks ago that she still owes the same amount of money on that loan as she did in 2016. Can't even make a dent in it. Because she's making the, the, the minimum payments. And guys... Doug and PA is black. I can say it. I know you're probably wondering this in your mind, but I'll say it. Odds are her mom is a single mom. Her mom's not married because if there were two incomes, if there was a father in the home making income, that loan would have got paid off. Because guess what? There's two incomes paying on this parent plus no loan, not just one. This is an adult woman with an extremely stable job and a house. Can you imagine what student loans are doing to people fresh out of college trying to find their way and struggling with the rising cost of housing? Student loans are way more predatory than you can understand at 18, but they know that and they want to keep you down. In, in situations like this, guys, you, you got to ask who they is. Well, they don't want us to su succeed. They want to keep us down. Who's they? It's excuses, guys. It's excuses that women make, particularly, you know, w women of color. They want to keep us down. They want to keep us back. They want to. Who's they? Excuses, guys. Stay away from women like this. Stay far away. And case number two. Let's get into this one. I'm going to share my stupidity and ignorance with student loans. My name's Carrie. I am a nurse practitioner and student loans has haunted me for 17 plus years. That is 17 years she's been paying on her, her student loans, guys. 17 years. And not only that, we all know in the red pill space, don't date nurses, guys. In fact, AJ Ranson Raves has a great compilation of videos about why you don't want to date nurses. You know what? I might just have to put a link to, to his video in the description. Stay away from nurses, guys. That is how long I've been a nurse. And it has affected my mental health. It's affected my financial situation. It has, it has affected my life. It affected my first marriage. I'm now divorced and I'm remarried. Wait, she's found two suckers, two simps to marry her, guys. Guys, 
don't marry women with a bunch of debt. Who are these guys? But it affected that. It put a strain on my family and it almost destroyed me. First, I was told when I was getting my two year degree that I should take out whatever loans are available to me and that it's likely when I graduate, they'll all be paid back. Well, I'm a baby, so I'm 20 years old at this time and I've never been taught anything about finance. I've never been directed in the right path with what I should and should not do with that. So I just said, yeah, that sounds great. Everything sounds great. And you're a woman. So you got the, you're strong, you're independent. You don't need no man. You can get a house by yourself. You can go on trips by yourself. You're strong. You need a man like you need a bicycle. And you put yourself in all this debt. And I, as most nurses get burned out from nursing so fast, but they can't quit. N nursing has become a, another one uh, of those industries with what, what they call the golden handcuffs, where you want to quit, but the lifestyle your job provides keeps you in it. You're handcuffed to your job, although you hate it. That is the golden handcuffs. So the money kept coming in, right? An $8,000 check, a $6,000 check, semester by semester. And then I developed a habit where I thought that was just the norm because I didn't take a break in school. So I went and got my bachelor's degree. And then I went and got my doctorate degree. So it was really no big breaks long enough where I could realize, hey, this was a bad decision, stop. I'm talking thousands of dollars of student loans. Now they did pay for my school. It did pay for my books. I continued to work while I was going to school. Well then how'd you get yourself in all this debt? I don't understand. She must have went to two private colleges. That's the only logical explanation. Because I needed to and I wanted that experience. And instead of taking the minimal amount to help me get through college, I didn't. I just took whatever was available. Boom, there it is, guys. And that's why most women have so much debt. They're trying to live a lifestyle while they're in school. They take out the maximum amount so they can go on these trips. They can live in these apartments. They can be independent of a man. They're using their extra student loan money that they should just be paying the tuition, but they're taking out more than that. Boom, there it is. It affected me so negatively. It has caused strain and worry and has and, and developed my compassion fatigue as a nurse or part of it because I immediately needed to work more because that first couple months out of school, you have to start paying your loans. And so that worry was always there. And it led to me hating what I was doing because I was working so very much. Told you, man. Nursing back in the day, I think back before the '80s, was that you know, uh, you know, patient-centric, nurturing kind of atmosphere. The nurses now work long hours, and not only that, but guys, remember, medical school slots haven't haven't increased with the demand for doctors. So more demands are being put on nurses. Nurses, the, the industry has become masculinized. And not only that, but it's dominated by women and women hate each other, man. You can see multiple women on TikTok complaining about how bad nurses are to, to each other now. And now you have to work in this environment and you have a, a bunch of student loan debt. Now. I have completely paid off my private loans, thank God. Yes, I had private loans and public loans. Ah. And that private about did me in because the interest rate just kept soaring higher and higher and higher. And I could never get out. I always felt like I was under pressure and just barely keeping my head out of water, if that makes sense. So I still have my public student loans. And I'm 37. And I've, I started school when I was 20. And I've been out since 2014. It's been, it's been miserable, let me just say that. But I've developed this channel specifically to help mentor nurses, to help prevent burnout, to help current burnout, to talk about the student loans and the issues that surrounds that because it's a real thing. And it has followed me around for my whole adult life. No sympathy, guys. She knew exactly what she was doing. And in the last student loan debt video, I already told you, if you're a young person 
17, 18 years old, looking to go to school, the go in state or go to community college. That is the number one thing that you can do to minimize your student loan debt right off the bat. There should be a basic understanding of that. Women like this, this woman who's burned out and complaining and talking about how stressed out she is, when you get sick and you go to the hospital, she's going to be the one taking care of you, and that should scare the heck out of you guys. And case number three. This one's kind of long, but it's it's pertinent to to everything that I say on my channel because this woman is married. She's married. She's over $100,000 in student loan debt. She's a part-time school counselor, guys. And her and her husband are getting buried by her student loan debt. Let's get into this. Here's what I hate about student loans. There's just so many things I hate. But what I hate the most is how you feel like you'll never get out of it. Ever. I initially borrowed $137,000. $137,000, guys. $137,000. To go to undergrad and grad school. I worked myself out of poverty. I broke the cycle. I broke all these generational curses. I'm sitting in my basement of my house that I own with my husband. I've done all these things that I felt like I had to do. Yes, I could have went to cheaper schools. I yes, you could have. really should have been told, no, Kimberly, you cannot borrow this amount of money. You need to go somewhere else. And I would have adapted and I would have been sad about it, but I would have been fine. I would have figured it out. I didn't have to go to Penn State and Duquesne University. Guys, Penn State is the most expensive public e university in the United States. It'll cost you over $1,100 a credit to attend Penn State your junior and senior year. I'm telling you, why these women go to these schools, I have no idea. Be really expensive schools, but I didn't know. I thought student loans were just something everybody had, and it was okay. With the interest... Every time a plan has changed, like if I've done income-based or um, income-driven or whatever, the interest capitalizes. So my loans at one point were up to 175. It went from $137,000 to $175,000, guys. Oh my God. Thousand dollars. Just like I'm a school counselor. I'm never gonna make that. Told you guys. I bet she she got her her bachelor's degree in education and a master's degree in freaking who knows what, man. A part-time school counselor, and she's married with kids. You can hear her kids in the background. She's cooked. Her and her husband both are just cooked. And why did he marry this woman? Why? I want to talk to her husband. What was he thinking? He's probably one of those, I love her, man. She's the most beautiful thing. She's the best thing to ever happen to me type of simps. Don't do it, guys. Stay away from women like this. Then we've paid off $40,000, $45,000 of my loans. We've paid them down, back down to one hundred and thirty. dollars We've paid all that interest. Just as gross during the COVID pause. We really worked hard to pay off a lot. And I was working part time. We did a lot to pay off her loans. You see the language switch there, guys? Ugh. When we did that, we really made it a focus. And then this save plan was supposed to like help pay the interest. It's not. I accrue $20 a day in interest. Like $600 a month. If I wanna pay that off, I need to pay that plus over that to pay down my principal. In the meantime, just since September, I've accrued $2,300 in interest. Why pay that? Now, I am. Yeah. Why be with a woman like this? That's the question. She's never going to get rid of this. You hear her kids in the background. This is a chain around her neck. And I and when she was young, you couldn't tell her nothing, man. And she planned on going into some type of education. That is what kills me the most about these women and their student loans. They will take out all this debt heading headlong uh, going headlong 
into an industry where they're not going to make any money and still want to be a wife and still want to have kids, guys. So it'll be on you. Her husband's money is going towards paying off her student loans. She's a part-time school counselor. Him switching to the public service loan forgiveness program because I haven't qualified for it before then because I haven't worked full-time for longer than a year. Like I worked, I got, we got married and you know, all this kind of stuff. Um, shortly after I graduated, my loans were in deferment and I didn't make the best choices early on because I didn't know. Because no one could tell you nothing, that's why. I didn't know. So now, I don't know what my options are. Do I sacrifice our family's livelihood to pay these things off? Do I trust that the government is going to come through <laughs> in 10 years from now? And say that I have these 120 payments and they're going to forgive my loans? Do I really trust that? When we talk about changing student loans, we need to change how interest is accrued at 6%, 6.25% interest. I should have the ability. I have good credit otherwise. Other than these awful things that provided me a leg up. I a leg up. A school counselor. A leg up. No. Sorry. I get that. But I should have a way to refinance them without going into a private bank and then I'm stuck at a thousand dollar a month payment forever. I should have a way to get a lower interest rate. When we talk about student loan forgiveness, my husband gets annoyed by it, but this is who we're talking about. I've done everything right. I made mistakes early on when I was younger and I didn't make the best choices. And now you're going to pay for it. You're going to pay for it. And your only choice, I would tell this lady, is enroll in the public student loan forgiveness program. I know a couple of people who've gotten their student loans paid off that, that way. It's your only way. What are you going to do? Stop paying them? No. Or you know what? Get another job. Find a way to make more money. That's the only way. You're sitting here as a, a part-time school counselor, guys. Come on. And I didn't really have anyone guiding me to do that. My kids won't ever have to do this. I'd rather write a check to wherever they decide to go. If they decide to go, well, you don't have to live with this. Like, we owe more on my, I owe more on my loans than we do for our house. That's how it is. Our four bedroom, two and a half bath with a full basement house. Yep. And that's how a lot of these women are, guys. I left the, the D.C. area. I spent nine years there. Yeah, I, I live in the South now. And dating in the D.C. area, I would, I'd be sitting across the table on a date with more women who had over $100,000 in student loan debt. Now, you don't ask about it on the first date or the second date, guys, but you got to ask about, ask about it by the third or fourth date, guys. Start talking about debt. See how much student loan debt she has. And if she has over $100,000, pay the bill, get up and leave. I've met women with $150,000, $300,000 in student loan debt, guys. These women are cooked. Why was that allowed? Why was I, at 18 years old, allowed to take out that amount of money? I should have been told no. And because I wasn't and I didn't know better, now I'm stuck. And it's just incredibly frustrating. So I'm sitting on my floor in my basement crying about it because it feels hopeless it fe feels really hopeless we worked really hard. we paid off my husband's loans his were only twenty thousand. and why do you think that would be guys because he was smart he probably got a bachelor's degree in something worth a dang he went to a state school then he met you you know what your husband should should be sad that he has to deal with all this he has no student loans. You have 170000 He should be down here crying on TikTok, but he's a man. He, but he's a man. Men don't cry on camera on TikTok. Real men don't. We paid his off. We've, we've paid off our vehicles. We have cash load vacations. We've done all these things. We've lived our lives. And so our option now... 
do we trust the government <laughs> to pay my loans off in 10 years? Whenever they get around to switching that, you know, Mahela, I started in August working full time as a school counselor. Whenever Mahela gets around to processing my application, it's January, still hasn't happened yet. I got a notification that they would be switching, but who knows? So do I trust them or do I sacrifice our family's livelihood to pay them off? This is the American dream, y'all. Guys. Nice. She tricked her husband into marrying her somehow. He's an idiot for marrying into this. Don't take a woman seriously that has this much debt, guys. Run far away. You have to be vigilant. I don't care how pretty she is. I don't care how feminine she is. I don't care. I've done 11 of these. This is number 12, guys. And I'm going to keep making them because these women are going to keep going on social media uh, crying about it. And then the, the, generation, the generation of women coming up are going to keep going to school as school gets more expensive. And they're going to keep taking out these loans. Let me know what you think about this in the comments. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. I'll catch you on the next one.